but I'm very happy to be here in Trafalgar. Let me recognize my friend, Honorable Dr. Colin McIntyre, a member of parliament, Honorable Ian Douglas, the Minister for Tourism, our friend, Mr. George, the chairperson of the Village Council, uh, Mr. Stevenson, our friends from the National Employment Program and the uh, Employment Agency and the Small Business Unit. And of course, all the wonderful people of the Valley. I believe, and Mr. George is here, I believe I have visited Trafalgar more than all prime ministers since our independence put together. I have been here more than all of them to speak to you on various issues of your own development and matters relating to the country. But tonight we are here specifically to speak about the opportunities which exist under the National Employment Program, under the Small Business Support Unit of the Government of Dominica. In independence, we announced in my address to the nation and of course, in my budget address, I spoke on the issue of unemployment as being a major challenge confronting Dominica. Now, it was no secret that there are people who are unemployed in Dominica. In Spain, speaking to the ambassador of Spain to Dominica, she said to me the unemployment rate among young people in Spain was as high as 50%. And among the national population, 26%. In Grenada, the unemployment among young people is in excess of 40%. In St. Lucia, is in excess of 25%. So everywhere in the world, no matter which country it is, whether it is a rich country, a middle-income country, or a low-income low country, you have challenges of unemployment. And in our case, for example, there is a challenge. There has been a challenge. There has always been a challenge of youth unemployment in Dominica. Some people may speak as if the issue of unemployment became a, a subject matter only during the reign of this lower party government. But over the years, we have not sat on our hands and do nothing about the unemployment issue confronting our country. We have launched a number of initiatives in this country to create employment for Dominicans. We have gone into building hotels, investing in hotels. We have spent millions on the infrastructure. We brought in night landing in Dominica, which would allow for more people to come into Dominica because when four or five o'clock came, all flights would stop landing in Dominica. And as a result of the heavy investment of the government into the airport and Melvin Hall, we have more people coming in because the airport is open over a longer period of time for the day. We launched the Youth Business Trust because we recognized that a number of young people had ideas to invest, to become self-employed. But we as young people always had the issue of this important aspect of security, collateral. We could not go to the bank to get a loan because the first thing the bank asks you for is a security, some land paper, a certificate of title. And we just coming out of school, we don't have that. And most of our parents may have had a piece of land but it's not registered, so they could not use it as security in the banks. So we had great ideas, but we had no money to implement those ideas. This government, we launched the Youth Business Trust and we put money in the banks to guarantee the loans for young people. We trained them and we guaranteed loans for them. You know what it means to guarantee a loan for somebody? It means that if the person doesn't pay, you will end up paying. Because we wanted to tell the young people of Dominica that we trust you and we trust that you can do something positive if you're given the opportunity to so do. And I can speak of a number of other initiatives that we have launched to assist in addressing the issue of unemployment in Dominica. But tonight we're here to talk about the National Employment Program. 
And you heard from Mrs. Joseph, who is the coordinator of the National Employment Program. She says, in the Rosa Valley. So when people are telling you, and you may want to even repeat that propaganda, that the NEP is not working, and nobody from the Valley is engaged, out of 108 people who applied, who registered so far in the Valley, 54 have been employed by the NEP. 54 people who had no jobs on the 30th of November 2013 got a job on the 1st of December 2013. 54 people in the Rosa Valley. And you can understand and appreciate the impact, the socioeconomic impact it is having on the valley because people can now bring a check to the homes and buy their groceries and, and pay the telephone bills and help pay the rent and help, pay, help the, the, the younger sibling to go to school. What we're here tonight to talk to you about is to encourage those of you who have not done so to engage yourselves to register with the NEP in order for you to be able to take advantage of this opportunity. Now, the NEP has different, different facets. There are a number of different programs under the NEP. We have sought to target the university graduates. We sought to target the college graduates. We are seeking to target the skilled, the semi-skilled, and the unskilled. And from all reports, the majority of young people who have been engaged are doing well. And you would have heard reports that, oh, people are getting paid. I, I get the feeling in this country that there is a little group of people who celebrate anything that goes wrong in this country. Anything that goes wrong in the country, they celebrate. If, if they comes and say, well, um, poverty has, has, has dropped, in this country from 38% from or 39% to 28%, that is true. As if we would like to know that it has increased. Now, I want to be happy if my neighbor is doing well, if my people in this country are doing well. Amen. And because they heard that one or two people did not get paid at the end of January, they only read your old NEPs and says, no, it doesn't make sense, people are getting paid. Only, I've been told, only about 14, 14 people have not gotten paid. Because either they don't have their social security card yet, or they don't have a bank account, which is required now by the, by the accounting system in the government service, have not brought in their bank account numbers. That's why it's not because we don't have the money for it. Because when this government makes a promise to people we find ways and means of fulfilling that promise. Some may take longer than others, but at the end of the day, we make way and find a way to do it. So when we decided to launch this program, to initiate this program, to implement this program, and we saw that it would cost us in excess of $7 million, I went to Venezuela and spoke to the president of Venezuela and said to him, I need to address this particular concern which is confronting our young people in Dominica. I'm going to need some financial support from Venezuela to implement this program. And we were able to get this money from Venezuela to finance it. So it's not people's VAT money or tax money that's paying for that NEP. So even when people come here and they tell you they can create seven and 5,000 jobs in three years, they must also tell you and tell us how they intend to finance it, because let us understand it. So when we send people to Witcher to work, the government is paying for it. When we send people to Lyme to work or Duasco, the government is paying these people's salaries, not Duasco paying the salaries. So it is our government is paying for the salaries of these people. So the 54 people who have been engaged from the valley, your salary has been paid by the government of Dominica 
and not where you in fact working. And my advice to you here, those of you who are at school, it's important that you take, you remain focused on your work. We can't be distracted. I will be the last person to come in and tell you you should not have an iPad and a smartphone and a Blackberry. That would be crazy of me to say that. Because we live in, in a different time. But we have to manage the use of it. It must not become a distraction to us. Education is important. We, when we came into government, this Labour Party government, when it came into office, only 7% of all high school graduates had access to the college in Dominica. Only 7%. So it means out of every 100 people who left, it, who left high school, in any given year, only seven of them made it to the college in Dominica. Whether to do a technical course or an academic pursuit, 7%. You know what it is today? It is 87% in Dominica. <laughs> and we have laid the platform we have led the platform to allow for 100% access. It is left to the students to do well at the CXC to gain entry into the college. But with a 30 plus million dollar investment at the college, we have led the platform for it to happen. And we are the, the Dominican State College is the only campus in the Caribbean, the only community college campus in the Caribbean that has 100% access to the internet. You can sit anywhere on the campus, under a tree, on the, on, on the road, on the sidewalk, anyone if in the farm at the college, in the washroom, wherever you are at the college, you can access the internet because we put the infrastructure there to allow for 100% access. <laughs> These things don't come just like that. You have to think of them. But first, you must have an appreciation for the challenges confronting your people. And you must also want to see your people succeed in order to implement those projects and programs. And that's why I, I, take, I take personal interest in the National Employment Program. And I want to commend Dr. McIntyre for his leadership because it is under his ministry that that program is, is, is under and I want to thank him for the leadership which he provides to that program. <laughs> and I want to say to our young people that when we get engaged in this program, you must be diligent, you must come to work because it is how you behave that will cause the program to be successful. Because I have met many employers who tell me, boy, these, people are, these young people are very good. Because my position is this. In many respects, our young people have kept their side of the bargain. They went to school, they have done well, and they have, they're back, or they've completed state college, we owe it to them as a country to keep our side of the bargain by creating opportunities for them to make a, way, to make a living and to develop a way of life for themselves. And this is why we will ensure and ensure that at the same time I am getting my salary, at the same time Dr. Mark is getting his salary, those who are engaged under the program will get the salaries at the same time. Not, not, not a week later or two weeks later. The same time you're paying us, we must pay the people under the National Employment Program. <laughs> Those of you who have dropped out of school, whether high school or college, back then, there was no issue of second chance, you know. When you get out of high school, that's it for you. But today we're talking about second chance. 
and third chance and fourth chance. And my advice to young people here who were students at the state college and you dropped out for whatever reason, you need to sit down with Dr. Mack and tell him what is the reason. If it's a financial reason, the government shall take care of it. Because we are paying the college, we've been giving the college about $3 million annually to meet the cost of its operations. And the government has committed to giving the college an additional $1.2 million annually, taking it up from $3 million to $4.2 million annually to provide more so we can ensure that more students can be enrolled at the state college. And all of these things, my friends, are being done at a very difficult time in the world. You hear of the challenges which the United States of America is having. So sometimes people come here and talk to you as if the only place in the world where they're having problems and challenges is Dominica. But all of us here have relatives in Antigua, in St. Martin, in the United States, in England, and wherever our relatives are, they will tell us that things are not as they used to be in those countries. In Anguilla, jobs which were the Anguillans would leave for Dominicans and Vincentians and so forth and Kiddishans, now they're taking them back. They're taking them back and now our Dominicans who live in, in, this, in this country are unemployed. Because jobs they were no longer, they were not interested in, they're taking them back because they, they have no jobs there now. There are governments in the region who have to borrow every month. There's one government in the OACS which has to borrow in excess of $40 million every month to meet its obligations to its citizens. You saw what is happening in Barbados. In excess of 3,000 people will be sent home. Last week, Friday, 300 people went home, were sent home. This week, again, an additional couple hundreds were sent home. Not, this is not because the government of Barbados does not like, do not like its people. It is because the government is making less than it is spending. Than it is, is making less than it is spending. And if you are not making enough to meet your obligations, you have to take action. And they have to send over 3,000 people home. People who have worked in the departments for 15 years, 20 years. People who have families. But the fact is, if the government keep, keeps them on the payroll, it will not have money to pay them when the month comes. So it has had to take some very strong actions. And I saw on the news the people who are going home. I, I read the newspapers in Barbados every day. And you see the front pages of the nation newspaper. It is not easy to, for somebody to go home at that particular time. And so the flip side of it, you can understand the excitement and the relief of somebody who is getting a job in this very difficult time in our history in the world. Not because the jobs fell like manna from heaven. It is because your government is concerned, your government is caring, and your government has created opportunities for our people in this country. So I do not want to be long here tonight because I'm sure you have questions and when you get registered. But one of the issues here, I know that you have, particularly my friends across in uh, Wharton Waven. And just to say that this bridge, should be, we should start this bridge next week. I have asked on the request of the Minister for Employment, your Member of Parliament, that from this month end, we shall pay we shall make a contribution, not pay, make a contribution to the vendors, a financial contribution to the vendors, um, those who have been affected by, by this, um, this um, breakage in the bridge. And of course, the entire Rosa Valley um, vendors, tourist vendors, will benefit from this um, financial contribution. And it will be for a period of, of some months. 
Um, so I'm sure the minister, Paul Ruff will meet with the vendors later on and speak to them to the details of this and so forth. A little effort towards bridging the, the gap that has been created as a result of, of, of the challenges which we have. So I would say to you that running this country is not easy. Um, we have so many challenges which cost, which you require a lot of resources for. And the amount of money we raise from taxes, VAT included, income tax, will never be enough to address the needs of our people. And that is why we have spent a considerable period of, period of time, a considerable period of, amount of time, cultivating relationships out of Dominica. People who can, if when something happened to Dominica, can reach out to Dominica and say, because we are friends, I am giving you this. We have the minister, the foreign minister of, of Mexico, who is coming into Dominica tonight to meet with us, sent by his president to visit Dominica because of the extraordinary relationship which exists between Dominica and Mexico. And I met the president of Mexico in Cuba last week. And as a result, he sent his minister here to meet with us. And Mexico has announced to us in writing that they're making an initial contribution in response to the, the trough in the amount of half a million US dollars to assist us. So we have friends out there who are prepared to assist us in time of need. And it is not only about diplomatic relations. It is about how, do you, how you treat these countries, how you react to them, the sincerity, the level of trust that they have with you. Because relationships between countries is not different from relationships between two people. If your neighbor is cursing you every day, and then she comes to ask you for something, one day you tell her, hold you cursing me, why should I give my stuff? <laughs> but if the neighbor is always greeting you, hello ma'am, good night, good morning, how are you? You know, how are children going, how is school and so forth? If tomorrow a lady comes to ask you for something, sure, sure, you know, and you may even give her something else, in addition to what she asked for. So when I hear people talk about they will have relations with Venezuela and China and these places, these places, people are not fools. They read everything we say in Dominica. They know it. It is about trust. It's about respect. It's about sincerity. So I am very happy to hear, and I thank you, Dr. Mark, for inviting me and, and the NEP for inviting me to speak to young people here. But I am really calling on people to register because we can only help you if you are registered. We can only help you if you are registered. And we will try our best to ensure that all those who have registered will find a space under the program. So I want to thank you for listening to me and may God bless our country. May God bless you. Thank you.